Nation, hope you are having an amazing Monday. My name, of course, Philip DeFranco. Before we jump into news at top stuff and things, two quickie updates. One, a big thank you to the fine bros for making a teens react to Philip DeFranco over the weekend. I watched it, I loved it, I normally cringe. But watching teens who had never seen my show reacting to the show was very, it was very eye-opening. And if you have time after today's show, definitely check it out. Link in the description to that, it's awesome. And two, something I'm very excited about, I I'm gonna be on Shark Week. I'm gonna be hosting a bunch of stuff for the 25th anniversary of uh, Shark Week and things are getting destroyed. Also, I'm gonna be hosting like an hour long show and I'm pumped. And I mentioned this to A, say thank you to the nation. That without you, I do nothing. I matter not at all. And many people would argue that I still don't, but thank you. And B, if you are in Southern California or near the Ventura area, I'm gonna be there Thursday from like 11 a.m. to like 7 or 8 p.m. So if you wanna just like come watch what I'm doing and then in between breaks, I'm gonna try and meet people. But if you wanna come out, anything, I just mentioned that you need to know more about links in the description down below. And from there, we jump into the first story of the day. And Nation, that first thing is money. Because according to new research published on Sunday, the super rich in America are hiding up to $32 trillion in offshore funds. To give you a little insight on how much money that is, you take uh, the United States of America and Japan, you take their gross domestic product and combine them, and then roughly you have about the same amount of money. And it's estimated that over $280 billion is lost because of these tax havens for the super rich. And here's the kicker. The Tax Justice Network, the people doing this research, they said it's not just these rich people doing it on their own, it's the banks. Oh, our good buddies, the banks helping them out. The banks they listed were HSBC, Citigroup, Bank of America, UBS, and Credit Suisse. Is that how you say it? And they added, they do it knowing fully well that their clients more often than not are evading and avoiding taxes. Much of this activity was illegal. And those numbers really hurt your soul when you look at the middle class. In 2010, 75% of Americans retiring only had $30,000 in their retirement fund. And add on the new research and stats that show that 49% of middle class workers will be near poor or poor in retirement, living on a food budget of $5 a day. And Nation, I share this because some of this is outrageous. Because I do not want to say, rich people are evil, because that is far from the truth. There are many rich people, there are CEOs, just people in power that are good people. Take the CEO of Lenovo, for example. Yang Won King got a $3 million bonus at the end of the year, and he said, no, I don't need it. Give it to all of my employees, and that's what they did. And that's amazing, but more often than not, you see things like Corning Inc., which is a company, uh, one of 26 companies, in fact, between 2008, 2011, that hasn't paid a dime in taxes. And that's despite the fact that they made $3 billion in that time. But then add on to that, that you have people like Susan Forge, she's a top executive at Corning Inc., actually complaining about the tax rate, saying the taxes on the company put it at a distinct disadvantage. Even though the CTJ, the Citizens for Tax Justice, analyzed all the numbers, and they concluded that in 2011, Corning's actual tax rate was negative 0.2%. Next up in super happy fun time news, Minka Kelly apparently has a sex tape. And I realized I'm way too excited for this. There is no excuse to be like, midnight release of Skyrim excited. Especially the news that puts a damper on my super happy fun time news that we may never be able to see this video. The tape is reportedly 30 minutes long. It is Minka and an ex-boyfriend. The tape is described as being filmed in a semi-professional manner on a tripod that's hooked up to a TV so they could see themselves while they were recording it. But the big issue is how old was Minka Kelly? Like this was shot in New Mexico, when was it? And then walked in the PFU, that being the per forensic unit. This unofficial unit analyzed the tape and realized that a song was playing in the background and it was a song from Brandy's album, Never Say Never, which was released June 8th, 1996, 16 days before Minka Kelly turned 18. Which means there were 16 days for this to potentially be filmed and illegal and so that's why it probably won't see the light of day unless uh, Minka Kelly decides to Kardashian it and just make money on the side. So main point, that was a thing. Next up, let's talk about chicken sandwich news. And surprisingly, there was a lot of chicken sandwich news today thanks to Chick-fil-A. I mean, people know that Chick-fil-A was created by a Christian family. They they aren't pro-gay agenda. They take Sundays off. They donate money to anti-gay groups. And today, because of that, the Muppets told Chick-fil-A to suck a dick. Or as the Jim Henson Company said on their Facebook page, Jim Henson Company has celebrated and embraced diversity and inclusiveness for over 50 years. And we have notified Chick-fil-A that we do not wish to partner with them on any future endeavors. Lisa Henson, our CEO, is personally a strong supporter of gay marriage and has directed us to donate the payment we received from Chick-fil-A to GLAD. And so this made many pro-gay people happy, but then Mike Huckabee had his own idea. Because Mike created Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day. And he said he did this in response to the vicious hate speech and bigotry from the left about Dan Cathy. Mike saying, simply affirm appreciation for a company run by Christian principles by showing up on Wednesday, August 1st, or by participating online. So far, it's received massive support from fellow Christians 
questions. And my official response to this is, can't we just get along? I just want to go back to a time where when I put food in my mouth, the only thing it meant was, I'm okay with being fat. But now everyone's put religion and politics in my food, and the only way I can eat a Chick-fil-A sandwich without feeling guilty is if I buy a pack of Oreos. I don't even eat Oreos anymore. But Nation, a question for you. Who are you backing in this fight? Are you in the corner of the Muppets and Oreos or Mike Huckabee and Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I can't say that without laughing because this is all ridiculous. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. And Nation, the last thing I want to talk about today are guns. Last Friday when I made a video about the Aurora shooting at the Dark Knight Rises premiere, I said this is not about gun control. This is about people. And I wanted to expand on that because a few people were confused. What I meant and mean by that is this is about people. This is about one person killing many. We have all the time in the world to politicize this issue, but we need to remember the people. Before you use a person's name, you jot down the number of the dead and you put it in whatever fucking bill you're gonna try and make. You have to talk about those who fell like we did on Friday. You have to talk about those that survived. 21-year-old Stephanie Davies, who went to the movie with a friend. That friend being 19-year-old Allie Young, who was shot in the neck. A wound that easily would have killed her if her friend Stephanie did not stay with her, put pressure on the wound, and called 911 at the same time. This young woman showed amazing courage, just selflessness, in front of almost certain death to save her friend. And then we break away from the stories of the victims and we wonder the human questions. Why did this happen? A question that was in everyone's mind when James Holmes was on TV this morning. Why and how could this be prevented in the future? The why, I don't know if we'll ever really know. The how do we stop this in the future has been a topic of huge debate lately. Everyone uttering the words gun control. Where does it start? Where does it stop? And these conversations didn't just start because there was a shooting, but a shooting with an AR-15, an assault rifle. An assault rifle that was banned for 10 years and then just made legal in 2004. And one of the really eye-opening things from this story is how James Holmes got so much ammunition. Because James bought two pistols, a shotgun, an AR-15, but because it is largely unregulated on the internet, he got 3,000 rounds of handgun ammunition, 3,000 rounds for an assault rifle, and 350 shells for a 12-gauge shotgun. Add to the bulletproof vest, the tactical gear, the, the large magazine, the guy was just ready to go to war without anyone taking notice. And I say this as a gun owner, I am confused about gun control. I have a pistol at home for personal protection. The only time it ever comes out is if I go to the shooting range, or Tom Cruise forbid someone tries to break in my house, I have that to defend myself. And I feel like pistols for self-defense, that makes sense. I mean, we just had a story come out of Florida. Two guys, one with a baseball bat, one with a pistol, break into an internet cafe, they're gonna rob the place. Then out of nowhere, like a ninja, 71-year-old Samuel Williams pulls his concealed weapon out and fires. He chases off the two men, he injures them, they go to jail. He's not gonna face charges, and he helped save all those people in that internet cafe. But at the same time, that is just a pistol. I mean, you could even justify a hunting rifle, a sporting rifle, but an AR-15? The AR-15 has been described as the civilian version of the M16, which the military uses. What are you hunting with that, is the question. And it's kind of scary to think that 100,000 people a year die from domestic gun violence. But on the other hand, people that are pro-gun are gonna say, well, one, Second Amendment, the right to bear arms so you can defend yourself, your family, your country. And honestly, I feel like I grew up with a lot of these guys. People would just kind of talk about and brag about their gun collection. 99.9% .9 of them didn't even hunt. They would just go out into the woods and shoot things. Adding to the argument that if everyone had a gun, then gun violence wouldn't be a thing. The idea being that you'd never shoot someone else because everyone else would then shoot you. And then of course the, well, you can't trust the government police, those sort of people argument. An argument many people feel is backed by news every single day. One of the most recent ones coming out of Anaheim, California. The way the story goes there, two police officers approach three men in an alley. A lot of the details have not been released yet, but the guys run, the police chase after them. One of the cops caught up with the guy that he was chasing. He shot him, he went to the hospital, and he died. Now, a third party is going to investigate everything that happened, but a protest has broken out. In fact, protesters stormed an Anaheim police station. The crowd chanting, no justice, no peace. Many of the protesters saying, it's not right for the cops to be the judge, jury, executioner. How can we feel safe when these are the police officers we have killing us in our streets? And there might have actually been a calm conversation if what happened did not happen at 1.30 p.m. later that day. Because the protest was outside at this time, the protesters saying someone just threw a bottle up in the air, the police officers saying someone threw a bottle and rocks at us, and they openly fired into the crowd with a beanbag gun, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, except reportedly a police officer lost control of his dog and it attacked a woman while she was holding her baby. Then a dog bit a guy and it's all caught on video and just craziness. And so some would argue that things like this happening are the reason that we should be stockpiling weapons. But Nation, that's your question of the day today. On the topic of gun control, do you think that everything should be allowed? No gun should be allowed. Maybe just assault rifles. How would you divvy it up? Let me know what you think in the comments down below or in a video response. It's something I definitely want to talk about more on the Sunday show, so be sure to be a part of that conversation. But Nation, that brings us to the part of the show where I throw something at your face, and today it is an Xbox 360. Of course, to possibly get pelted in the face with said thing, just leave a comment on this video. Join the conversation. Also, big thanks if you clickety-clack the like button, favorite, share wherever you share.
share things, but whether you did or not doesn't change the fact that my name's Philip DeFranco, you've just been filled in, I love your faces, and I'll see you tomorrow. <gasps> Got it.